God bless you. My name is Pastor Harris Kakalides, and today's program we're going to talk about the topic of the riches of this world and why the prosperity gospel does not work. This is an important message and it's something that needs to be given to the church nowadays because there's been in TBN and in many other stations there have been prosperity gospel preachers that that say that that God wants you rich and that if you're poor you is cursed and that Jesus died to make you rich and that is not what the Bible teaches and I wish to speak today about this topic um, my name is Pastor Harris Kakalides. Um, the church's Christianity Church is in 341 East Tusculum Street, Philadelphia, PA 19134. Our days of services is Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 5 p.m. Um, if you want to mail anything, any, any comment or any questions, um, through my address is 341 East Tusculum Street, Philadelphia, PA 19134. Okay. We're going to start speaking about this, and by the time you have uh, are hearing this, it has been some time ago when we received a letter from a lady that wanted prayer for three things. One was for good health. Um, number two was for to grow in the Lord, and number three was to win the lottery. The first two are things I and my wife would be glad to pray for, anyone's health and their growth in the Lord. That is very important. But the last one was to be rich and win the lottery. There are many verses in the Bible which speaks and warns us about the riches of this world and how harmful it, it would be to one's growth as a Christian. God doesn't want you to be rich if he knows you could lose your soul. First Timothy 6 verses 5 to 10 um, is a very good passage to begin with and this is our main passage. It reads, Preserve disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supporting that gain is godliness, with, from such withdraw thyself. Don't you see that nowadays? Um, verse 5, it speaks of men that think if one have money and so on, you are living a holy life, and tells us to withdraw ourselves from such people. Think of today how many false teachers in TBN are preaching that if you are poor, you are not a true Christian, and that Christ died to make you rich. When hearing these false teachers, we have to remember what Christ said in Luke 6.20. Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Also, remember what he said to the rich in that same chapter, verse 24. But woe, curse to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Now, let's, let's read verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, verse 6 says, A holy life is being pleased and happy with what you have. Now, that is a blessing, to be content. Uh, many people don't want to learn about contentment. But yet the Bible tells us that is the blessing to be content. That is great gain. That is the gain that um, that John speaks about. That you that, that you may prosper as your soul prospered. To be content is your prospering in your spiritual growth. Uh, verse seven says, "For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out." Uh, verse 7 talks about how we came into the world and we are leaving the same way. Job said, Naked came out, out of my mother's womb, and naked will I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. We as Christians should not be attached with the things of this world, what it has to offer. Let's read verse 8. And, we, and having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Verse 8 speaks about us being happy and content with what we have. That is the big problem with the prosperity gospel. It makes men not content with what they have and gives them something to covenant after. Um, and the Bible says, Thou shalt not covenant. But yet, the prosperity gospel tells us to covenant, to desire what is not ours. Verses 9 and 10 tells us, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and prediction. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covenant after, 
they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Wow, what what verses in the Bible? What, it tells us very clearly. Um, it tells us very clearly um, in verses 9 and 10. It gives us a warning, and those who are wise will heed. The book of Proverbs has lots of wise saying, which I would like to, for us to review about the riches and what does it has to say. Um, Proverbs 30, it was written by Hagar, and we're going to focus on verses 7 and 9. It says, Two things I ask you, don't deny them to me before I die. Keep falsehood and deceitful words far from me. Give me neither poverty nor wealth. Feed me with the food I need. Otherwise I may have too much and deny you, saying, Who is the Lord? Or I might have nothing and steal and profane the name of my God. These words are words of Hagar. Look in verse 7 what he asks for. The first we find is that he may not be a liar. Second is that he would not be in poverty or wealth. Verse 9 states, why, why otherwise I might have too much and deny you, saying, Who is the Lord? Doesn't that remind us of 1 Timothy 6 um, verses 9 and 10? Doesn't that remind us of what God says clearly in his word? What does God tell us in verse 9 and 10 of 1 Timothy? It tells us, But they that will be rich will fall into temptation, and they snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and prediction. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Um, some translations say a root of many evils, which while some coming after, they have error from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Hallelujah. You may have to forgive because I'm doing this program in somebody's house and uh, I don't have a computer in my house myself, but you might hear some noise in the background. That's why. Um, verses, verses um, let's continue in these verses. Proverbs 15, verses 16 to 17. These are the words of Solomon, who of all people knew what riches can can do um verse proverbs 15 verses 16 and 17 better is with fear of the lord little with fear of the lord than great treasure with turmoil better is a meal with vegetable where there is love than a fattened calf with hatred turmoil means trouble problems disturbance commotion so we can see the picture of what the riches of this world has to offer the bible says it's better little with the fear of the lord than than great treasure with turmoil, with problems. And that is the truth. Proverbs 15, 27 states, A greedy man brings trouble to his own family. To think how many men and women left their family with no food to use it on the lottery to gamble. How many families don't pay their bills to gamble. It's sad that is why is dirty money. Greed is a sad thing. If you think of the lottery, think of it as someone bodies else else children money or or somebody else bills money because many people have used that money um, for, instead of paying their bills to play the lotto. Proverbs 12 verse 14 states, "A man will be satisfied with the good by the words of his mouth, and the work of a man's hands will reward him." Proverbs 19 verse 1 in the NAV says, "Better a poor man who walks in his integrity than he who is." Crooked in his own ways and rich, and and Haman's translation puts it: Better is the poor that walketh in his own integrity than he that is perverse in his lips, and is a fool. Proverbs 19 verse 17 says: He that hath pity upon the poor leneth unto the Lord, and he which hath given will he pay him again. Let's now go to the New Testament. Our Lord Jesus stated in Mark. 836 in the Haman translation it says for what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his life and what can a man give in exchange for his life it's true that that you could lose your life because of riches but um, I like the King James says it better it says for what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul um, it's uh, the riches of this world. What it, it matters if you had gain all the riches of this world and lose yourself, b burning forever with no hope of getting out. Even if you live to be a hundred, it won't matter much. <laughs> Mark 
Money is not the secret of ha to happiness. Our riches is not of this earth, but is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21 says, Lay not for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and there thief, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up your tr your yourselves treasure in heaven, where doth moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. The prosperity gospel seeks riches here and now, when in reality there is no guarantee of riches here and now. The gospel is that God came in human form to die for your sins, and he rose again from the dead. And if you believe he died and rose for your sins and repent, you will be saved from hell. Prosperity gospel is a false gospel which states Jesus died to make you rich in this world. Matthew 13 verse 22 states, Now the, the one sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this age and the seduction of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The seduction are, is pleasures or deceitfulness of this is the parable. Of, uh, this is a, a part of the parable of the sower. In the story of, of the sower, Jesus explains that wealth could cause Christians to be unfruitful, be worthless in their walk with Christ. I am in no way stating it is a sin to be rich. Don't get me wrong. There were many in the Bible who was rich. Example: Joseph of Arimathea, Matthew 27 verse 57; Mary, the sister of Lazarus, John 12 verses 1 to 6. Cornelius, Acts 10. But none of them love money or desire their riches, but use their money to the glory of God. None of them in the Bible became rich. They were, they were just were. None of them love their riches. None of them put their trust in their riches. Many who are rich fall into the love of money. With great riches, you could fall into the sin of leaving Christ. Example, Matthew 19, verses 16 to 22, and Mark 10, verses 17 to 22, and it's also in Luke, but I just want to focus on these two passages. I want to read them. <clears throat> okay, let's read. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I, I want to just state before I read this. Um... Let's read this and then I want to say some other stuff. It talks about the rich ruler. Just then someone came up and asked him, Teacher, what good must I do to have eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good, he said to them. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Um, Jesus is good. Jesus is God. <laughs> Just to make that point. Which ones? He asked him. Jesus answered. Do you do not murder? Do not commit adultery? Do not steal? Do not bear false witness? Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbors and yourself. I have kept all these. The young man told him. What do I la still lack? If you want to be perfect, Jesus said to him. Go, sell your belongings, and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard that command, he went away grieving, because he had many possessions. Okay, let's, let's read another passage uh, where he speaks the same thing. Um, in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 and 22. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up knelt down before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. No one is good but one God. Jesus is claiming to be God there because he is good. He is a good teacher. He is a good master. He is a good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep in John chapter 10. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these from my youth. Then look at him, looking at him, Jesus loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go sell all you, you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. But he was stunned at this demand, and he went away grieving because he had many possessions. The young man said he kept all the commandments, but he failed in the first one. 
Thou shalt have no other gods. Exodus 20. His wealth was his God. And you can see that in verses 22, 21 22. His wealth was his God. But not the God of the Bible. The prosperity gospel is not the God of the Bible. But it is I, myself, and me. And the end is Satan. is the God of this world. Anything can be a God, even desire to be rich. Jesus knew that the rich man loved his wealth. The biggest problem with the prosperity gospel is once they find out they are not getting richer or they lose their riches, they leave Christ. And with that goes salvation which they never had. Because they never came to Jesus because they were sinners in need of a Savior. But they came to Christ to get wealth. Then they will be, get mad at Jesus and say they was a victim of Jesus where in reality Jesus was a victim of them. Jesus while on earth was poor and not rich as the prosperity gospel preached. Saying um, that says uh, we could read that in Matthew 8 verse 20. Um, Jesus wasn't rich. Jesus really didn't even have a home to call his own. And, and this is uh, let's go to Matthew 8 verse 20. Let's open our Bibles to Matthew 8 verse 20. Matthew 8 verse 20 reads, And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his hand. Um, when they took Jesus' robe and gambled for his robe, it wasn't because Jesus had bought it. He received it from Herod. I mean, Luke 23 verse 11, it says that Herod gave him a robe. He gave him a beautiful robe when he was judged and condemned. Um, many prosperity gospels said, look, Jesus had a, a richly robe. Jesus died with bling bling. No, Jesus was poor. That robe was, did not belong to Jesus. It belonged to Herod. That's why they gambled for it. It was worth money. Um, Luke 23 verses 11 says, you have to... Forgive me because there's birds in the background and it, it does bother the ears. And Herod with his men of war. Um, Luke chapter 23 verse 11 it says, And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a glorious robe and, set, and sent him again to Pilate. They gave him a glorious robe. There's other verses that I want you to look up, and you can look them up. Matthew 19, verses 23 to 24. Mark chapter 10, verses 24. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. that tells us not to love the world nor the things that are in this world. Philippians 4, verses 11 to 13, in whole context, um, where it talks about being content. And then it says you can do all things to Christ, which strengthen you. Um, 3 John chapter 2, verse 2. Um, when compared, uh, remember it says that you you may prosper as your soul is prosper. First John, um, chapter, um, third John, I'm sorry, third John, chapter two, verse two. When compared with other verses, is not speaking of prosperity but spiritual maturity. I, I want I want to make this clear. If you have not received Christ, but you have received the Christ of the prosperity gospel, which is not the Christ, is another Jesus. The way. 2 Corinthians 10 says, talks about another Jesus. The prosperity gospel is another Jesus. If you have received the wrong Jesus and you wish to receive Jesus, uh, Jesus, God in human form, second person from the Trinity, you may pray with me right now. Father, forgive my sins. I receive Jesus as my Savior. Jesus, help me to look at you, the author and finisher of my faith, who died for my sins, so I would not go to hell. And you... And made it way so I could talk to the Father. I could talk to you. I could talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me live a Christian-filled life. A Holy Spirit-filled life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. My name is Pastor Harris Kakalides. See you back on the next program.